And welcome you. Watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. Asia as a pack is trading okay for itself after the slew of days where you've seen the kind of carnage across the board. Today's session seems to be a bright spot. About half an odd percent plus for Nikkei 2 to 5, Shanghai trading higher by about more than that. And uh, Hong Kong too, amidst all the unrest that we're seeing, this uh, market is not doing all that badly, about half an odd percent higher. However, SGX Nifty though is uh, trading uh, the other way around, down about 14 odd points marginally, but still in the red. Good morning, Neeraj. Good morning, Devina. And the sentiment across a lot of those suspect names or slightly weaker names is so sour that not surprised that the SGX is doing what it is doing. Maybe some of the stronger hands ha help pulling the SGX up later in the day because that's been the order, right? We started off okay. We've ended usually better than what the intraday low is. Yeah, but it's really difficult because uh, when global markets are up, we're down. When global markets are down, we're down. When global <laughs> markets are stable, we're down. So it's like, you know, yeah. at this point, the sentiment itself is so damaged that you know, you're really looking on for any good news to latch on to, but just not being able to get your hands on it. Yeah, maybe the maybe the government uh, and the finance ministry obliges the economy. A 35 basis yesterday. point cut by the RBI didn't do it. Didn't it didn't do it. Yeah. So yeah. we need the Finman to chip in. <laughs> Let's wait and watch if that happens. But uh, time to take a look at what the derivative space setup is looking like. Namely, standing by with uh, precisely that. Uh, it's an important day. It's the Weekly expiry as well. Volumes have usually shaped up very well the last few days. Namneet, how is the setup looking like this morning? Good morning to both of you. Well, every uh, pullback has been used as an opportunity to sell in this sort of market. Though so in the second half, there was the last hour selling, which we did witness. There was there were no major positions seen, at least in the Nifty futures, as the open interest was just about flattish. On back of RBI policy, there were more actions seen for the banking stocks. And for Bank Nifty, we did see a mild bit of increase coming in for the open interest, which was up about 2.5%. So there were some short positions which came in on Bank Nifty. Uh, India Volatility Index which cooled off in the first in the opening session as the markets were higher but towards the end that two inch higher uh, closing around the levels of 16.7 and for the longest time we've been talking how markets are over, oversold. Look at the Nifty PCR yesterday. Once again it fell below the mark of funds so that was at about 0.97 and what led to Nifty PCR falling below one there was more action seen on the call side in terms of open interest addition. Call writers were back in action and put writers ran for cover in yesterday's trade. So first, this is the uh, distribution for today's expiry. Maximum open interest on the call side is at the 11,000 call and on the put side it is at the 10,800 strike. And if you uh, go by the premium for 10,850 where we are currently trading on both call as well as put, the combined premium is somewhere about 10,090 uh, rupees, pardon me. And if somebody wants to pay a, uh, play a straddle on the 10,850 strike for the day, it's giving you a range between 10,760 uh, to about 10,950 on the top. So watch out for that range in today's session. However, as I mentioned, a PCR went below one because of unwinding on the put side and addition on the call side. Um, stock futures to focus on in today's trade. The markets were down, but Balkrishna Industries did witness some fresh long positions. Numbers come out on Saturday. Um, India Bulls Housing, which was up uh, down over 10% in trade, that saw fresh short positions. PSU Banks for weeks, so Bank of Baroda saw fresh shots. And Kajaria Ceramics was up about 2%, but short covering was seen on the future side. And very quickly, FI data, um, they continue to sell on the cash side. And short positions, by the way, uh, were added on the index uh, future side, on the short side. And the ratio is still its net short at 75%. And it's quite surprising, one day below the weekly options expiry, you tend to see more of addition in the option side. But that did not happen. There was more of unwinding on the option side from the FI front. Put long, call short, pull short, put short across the board. There was unwinding, just a meager addition seen on the call long side. Back to you guys. All right, Namni, thanks very much for that. So that's how it's looking like in terms of the setup today is obviously the weekly options expiry as well. So can anticipate uh, a spike in the overall turnover as well. Uh, but bringing in Gorang Shah of Jirjit Financial Services. He's joining us on the show this morning. Gorang, a very good morning to you. Not spoken to you in a while. And uh, it looks like the market dynamics have changed since we've last spoken. Or probably they're uh, still the same, but it's just worsened a bit more. Thanks, Devina, and morning to all of you all. So certainly the dynamics have changed, and I think uh, uh, fear has uh, gripped the market. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, the way broader markets have reacted. And along with that, you have a lot of domestic and global cues to bring the sentiments down. But uh, I would definitely follow one of the learnings of the great guru, that is, buy the fear and sell the greed. And uh, I would also at the same time advise all your viewers and investors that 
Don't try to be a khatro ke khiladi. Avoid names which have corrected 60, 70, 80%. Just don't go and buy those names because they have corrected. Because under all possibility, they can correct another 50%. Stick to quality names. Stick to large cap. Stick to companies which have capability or which have delivered and have capability of delivering on the earnings. And, you know, always do a little bit of uh, revisiting your portfolio periodically. And don't try to do anything adventurous which may possibly harm your wealth and health. Uh, but at the same time, I think from levels where we were, 12,000 on the Nifty, 40,000 on the index and to level where we are, I think it is time to pull out your shopping list and go and at least deploy 25-30% of your investable capital in current market. Where would you deploy, Gorang? I mean, you know, while you've seen stocks correct heftily, like you've said, so probably don't go and, you know, look and to go shopping amongst those names. But uh, the larger names also, I mean, when you're looking at it, the ones that have remained stable still look slightly more pricey. So don't bother about the valuation, still invest, because that's where your protection lies. Well, honestly, Devina, tell me if there has been... Uh, a bunch of investors who have been able to catch uh, the lowest level and sell at the highest level. It does not happen. It is only happening in dreams. And that is one of the reasons why I mentioned that don't put all your strength at one time. Uh, stagger your investment. Start with 20, 25, 30 percent depending upon your risk appetite and deploy over a period of time. And markets will always give you an opportunity and you should never be in a hurry to invest in the market. But on the flip side, you should always be in a hurry to book your profits whenever you get them whatever you had estimated uh, the kind of return that you want. So your question was where do you deploy your uh, capital? I think private sector banks is the first. The second one would be select well-established credible uh, pedigree names in the NBFC and there are not one but one too many. Uh, I would also stick my neck out and buy a little bit of IT consumption, consumption discretionary, consumer discretionary and a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, cement. I think that's the broad basket that I would, uh, you know, concentrate on and currently maybe about four or five sectors and start nibbling into some of the names. And if I have to name a few, I think all the four names amongst the HDFC group, HDFC, HDFC Bank, HDFC MC, HDFC Life, uh, amongst the banks, uh, private sector banks, uh, Axis Bank, ICIC Bank, Kotak Bank, Amongst the NBFCs that I mentioned, uh, of course, you have LIC Housing Finance, you have Canfin Homes, you have Bajaj Finance, uh, Chola Mandalam uh, Investment. Amongst the cement pack, mid-cap names first because we believe mid-cap will definitely deliver. So you have Ramco Cement, Dalmia Bharat, Ramco, uh, uh, JK Lakshmi Cement. Amongst the larger names in the cement pack, you have ACC Ultratech. Uh, that's what I would possibly look at. And mid-cap IT is something that definitely excites us, Devina. Over there, you have LNT Technologies, NIT Technologies. HCL Tech came out with numbers yesterday. Uh, we maintain a target of 1250 over there, post the numbers, and TCS Infosys. Uh, amongst the consumer durable, uh, I would possibly look at uh, HUL, ITC, Godrej Consumer, Dabur, Marico. And the discretionary spend, I would look at Titan, Bata, uh, and of course, uh, amongst the QSR, Jubilee Foodworks. So I think that's going to be the broad universe. 30 names, Gorang. <laughs> I don't know 30 what's left. names. <laughs> wow, what's left? Anyways, one, one quick question, Gorang. Uh, good morning. What did you make of the Tata Steel results? Well, disappointing, uh, Neeraj, given the backdrop and the environment that you have. And there is no saying as to when uh, the, you know, great two president of two larger economies, US and China, will sit together and iron out their issue. So, my sense is that it will bleed, but I remain optimistic uh, on the metal pack as far as the domestic consumption is concerned. And you have uh, the Prime Minister speaking, speaking about uh, Bharat Nirman, uh, infrastructure construction. We had the Honorable Finance Minister uh, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman speak about uh, infrastructure creation in her budget speech. Uh, and I believe that uh, domestically consumption would start looking up. Uh, but it will take a while. It's not like it will happen overnight. It may take at least another two or three quarters. And as a disclosure, we do remain positive on Tata Steel over the next two, two and a half year kind of time horizon.
Okay, now, Gorang, stay on. So much more to talk about. Let's go across to our research team to try and figure out what are the stocks that one should monitor today. Tata Steel is something that we discussed in first word in addition to Aurobindo. A clutch of other names which have come out with numbers, some good ones as well. So watch out for that. And and then a few other names that you should monitor today. Ultratech comes out with numbers, so an important one to monitor as well. Um, Agam. Nikki and Mishika, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, Mishika, to you first, the stocks and news. Yes, let's first look at the MSCI changes. MSCI adds HDFC Life Insurance to the Global Standard Index and deletes Union Bank of India from Global Small Cap Index. Now, these changes are as of the close of uh, 27th August 2019. Let's look at the quarterly numbers of HPCL. The results were below estimates and the miss could have been larger if not for the Forex gains. They reported uh, gross refining margins stood at $0.75 per barrel versus $4.7 per barrel reported by Indian Oil Corporation. And they posted EBITDA losses in the refining segment on weak gross refining margin and inventory losses. PAT boosted on account of Forex of 200 crore rupees. Siemens India results were in line with estimates. The revenue growth led by the mobility and digital businesses. Management says liquidity is becoming a concern in the industry with payments being delayed. And the board decides not to pursue sale of mobility, rail and mechanical uh, drives business to its parent, which is a positive for the company. Last set of numbers, Phoenix Mills results were above estimates. Their revenues are up 49%, net profits up 2.2 times. Margins are flat at 47%. Now, quarter one was aided by higher profits in the residential business, and the retail performance was affected by one-offs. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Mishka. Uh, HCL Tech, uh, how did the numbers shape up? What are the management comments we like? Right, well, Neeraj, it was a mixed uh, set of earnings. There's no doubt about the fact that uh, revenues were much better than expectations, but there was a very big disappointment when it comes to margins. So uh, to take you through the numbers very quickly, we've seen about a 3.8% growth in uh, dollar revenues, rupee revenues up 2.7%. EBIT margin standing at 17.1% against expectations of 17.8 percent that's where a little bit there is a disappointment and net profits consequently declined 13.6 percent now uh, there was a lot of deal momentum that the company had signed uh, in the previous couple of quarters and a lot of these are uh, you know uh, have a majority of the realization in the beginning which is why we are looking at uh, you know higher revenues but on the other hand there was there's also been a contraction in margins why well uh, a strong rupee higher visa costs, and there were also certain costs and investments associated with the integration of the IBM products recently acquired. And that's the reason why we, we did see a decline. Now, I did ask the management, now, the wage hikes will also be a part of the second quarter. Can we expect further well, pressure on margins, as well as the fact that there could be a challenge when it comes to maintaining their margins uh, guidance, and the, the management is quite uh, well confident that uh, the deal momentums will drive the margins higher in the second half. So there shouldn't be much to worry about. But for now, a lot of brokerages have cut their price targets because of the miss in margins. Now let's see if the stock reacts negatively today. Thanks yeah. for that, Agam. Nikki, somebody yesterday said that Ultratech, he expects a 20% downtick over the course of the next one year. Can today's quarter be the start of that or will it be a strong quarter? Well, we're expecting good set of numbers at least in Q1. We know that the pricing power has been fairly recent for all the cement companies. Altitech Cement is uh, expected to be uh, cashing up on that, and we're expecting strong set of numbers. Top line, we're expecting a 12% growth there. Operational performance, we're looking at a 46% uptake, and profitability is more than expected. It's expected to more than double at 1,100 crore as compared to 590 uh, odd crore that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. Volumes are expected to be fairly decent, 8% uptake there at a number of nine. 19.7 million ton compares to that of 18 million ton. Realization are seen higher, more than 4% there. EBITDA per ton, we're expecting a 36% uptick there. The number that we're working with and we'd like to keep an eye out will be 1,200 rupees per ton. Um, uh, except for uh, the volume and the high prices, we're expecting cost uh, uh, saving measures which are expected to drive the operational performance of the company. Benign fuel costs, domestic pet coke prices are expected to fall by 15%. Diesel prices are, have already slid by 2%. Uh, higher axle norms, so which is expected to uh, lower the freight cost, is expected to augur well for the company. Net-net, we're looking at good set of numbers. Ramp up of Benani assets, along with the cost efficiency, essentially is expected to lead to good set of numbers coming in from Altitech Cement. Well, let's wait and watch how it shapes up. Thanks a lot, all three of you, for joining and giving us that perspective. Uh, Gorang, from amongst the quarter four cement companies that have declared results thus far, which result has stood out for you? 
So the, I think two large names, if I have to mention, uh, my sense is that Ultratech and ACC. Uh, not only from a quarter perspective, uh, Neeraj, uh, I'm talking about long-term investment and uh, my sense is that both these companies uh, have definitely proved their mettle and uh, consumption is going to look quite stronger as we go forward. So I would, uh, if I had to invest, I would give 50-50 to both ACC and uh, Ultratech. All right, uh, that's uh, on Ultratech and the uh, the cement pocket. What about the India Bulls group stocks, Gorang? I mean, the kind of thrashing that they've been meted out uh, over the last uh, few days, uh, you know, that's almost brutal. I mean, for India Bulls housing finance also, while the numbers were a bit disappointing uh, and they were punished accordingly. But, I mean, uh, to say for shareholders of these companies now, you know, what's the option? Stay put or probably start exiting slowly? So I would, uh, you know, restrict my comments on the uh, on the earnings, etc. I would not comment on buy, sell, and hold because we don't cover any of the India Bull Group stocks. Uh, so you know, first of all, uh, you know, when you have company which is under in the spotlight for all the wrong news flows that we've heard, and despite of the fact that the management has not once but come out one too many times and try to suit sentiments and give justification etc the stocks have not managed to steer float especially with respect to india Bull housing and uh, you know the entire merger with lakshmi vilas bank i think yeah, all those things are now uh, you know hanging in the air uh, and uh, post the numbers that we saw i think it was just day before yesterday correct me if i'm wrong Devina. india Bull, uh, india Bull housing finance delivered the number and the stock corrected so there were a lot of, you know, a lot of opportunities for investors to possibly take a flight to safety. Well, if you've not done that, then you can possibly just hope and pray that uh, the negative news flows dies down and whatever the management has said in terms of bringing back the business uh, to the growth trajectory happens sooner rather than later. But again, you know, there are much credible names to look at if you've not invested, possibly you can look at HDFC Limited, LIC Housing Finance, or Canfield Homes as a better option. Mm. Okay, the other stock obviously is also the Z Group stocks. Now, uh, f the overhang initially was that when's the deal going to come about? Uh, then a deal came. It wasn't the deal that the markets had wanted. Uh, they wanted a strategic partner. They got a financial partner, uh, and now some more. Uh, you know, offloading of assets and monetizing of assets is expected to happen, but that could take some more time. What happens in the meanwhile? You know, while you've seen uncertain days for Z, uh, it's almost become a trader's play now. You bet you, you are definitely bang on, uh, Devina, when you say that it has become a, become a trader's play because you get wild swings, 5-10%, up 5-10% down. And... Uh, you are, you are also right when you say that uh, it was a deal which was a no deal because the amount of funds that came in, uh, I don't think that's something that uh, the you know creditors were looking at or the fund managers who have lent money to Z is the amount that they possibly looked at. As a disclosure, we do have a coverage, but we put the coverage under observation, that is under the scanner uh, on fallback of whatever events have happened. And, you know, the sad part is the time taken by the management in terms of uh, getting the funds and getting in that uh, private player. Uh, I would rather be interested in hearing the commentary from those fund managers who have got into the agreement uh, with the management of Z as to what they have to say now. I don't know whether they have said anything or I have missed it out. I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. But uh, unless you have clarity, Devina, I think you should uh, just be a little bit careful and cautious. Okay, that's on Z, just be a little bit more careful. Uh, you know, we'll just go on to our technical experts, bring them on board in just a bit. But in the meanwhile, let's go on to our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, where Yash Padia is joining us to tell us about a pattern that the Bloomberg Terminal has thrown up on a particular stock. Yash, what's the stock today? 
Morning, Devina. So we are looking at Gulf oil lubricants, and there's a buy signal coming in on the back of the bullish engulfing pattern that's seen forming uh, on the daily charts. Uh, what is the bullish engulfing pattern? Well, it is basically the formation of a large green candle uh, right after a red candle, wherein the body of the second uh, candle completely engulfs the one ahead of it. Uh, the larger is the size of the second candle, the higher are the odds uh, of a rally. Uh, coming back to the price chart of, of you know of Gulf oil lubricant, what we saw is that the stock came crashing from the levels of almost. Uh, 900 to almost 900 uh, to as low as 700 where it formed a double bottom uh, taking a support at that level and moving higher uh, but the previous two trading sessions uh, they had been weak uh, but with the kind of move that we saw yesterday closing almost 4% higher it has not just uh, you know recovered the losses of the last two days but has also closed far higher uh, than that uh, take a look at the weekly chart for Gulf oil lubricants as well uh, and the key support which was at the mark of 700 is where the 200 day uh, 200 week exponential moving averages so the pink line over here that is the 200 week exponential moving average uh, the the, uh, the second time that it came to this level and it has seen a rebound it managed to go it managed to slip below it last week but it uh, closed far higher and in fact at lower levels it saw considerable amount of buying uh, this week too it's up about 4% and the RSI too on the low, uh, on, in the lower panel uh, shows that it has given a positive divergence uh, from the current level so uh, most of these factors suggesting that there could be further upside for gulf oil lubricants and how well has this worked in the past, Yash? Uh, so Neeraj, specifically when it comes uh, to the bullish engulfing pattern, uh, uh, two, uh, two out of the last four times uh, that the indicator has uh, you know, occurred, on an average over the next one month period, the stock has managed to run up more than 5%. Okay. Let's wait and watch uh, how it uh, shapes up. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Yash. So that's uh, well, a reasonably good hit rate with a fairly, degree, fairly good return percentage for Gulf Oil. Let's wait and watch the bullish engulfing pattern as thrown up by the Bloomberg terminal. But talking about charts, let's get in um, somebody who tracks charts and derivatives very, very closely. Important voice to have today, Samit Chavan, Chief Analyst for Technical and Derivatives at Angel Broking, joins us on the show. Samit, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in, Neeraj here. What's your approach to trade today, Samit? Because it's, uh, it's, it's fairly volatile, to put it mildly. Good morning. Yes, in such kind of scenarios, you know, we generally tend to see volatile moves and this is what uh, we have been witnessing since last three, four days. Uh, market has been correcting, they have been attempting to give some kind of rebound, but overall if you see 11,000 has been acting as a resistance. Uh, but you know, uh, with a slightly broader view, according to us, uh, 10,780, 10,750 is likely to act as a strong support. Uh, at least for a while and from here on we would expect a decent bounce back probably towards again towards 11,000 or 11,150 also. So on the higher side 11,200 remains to be a sturdy wall at least uh, for a time being and low side uh, 10,750, 10,780 is likely to act as a support. So we expect uh, you know, Nifty to gyrate within this range. Uh, but if we have to take any trade setup at current level, our inclination would be more on the positive side because you know, 10,750, it is a crucial junction. Uh, there's a cluster of support, uh, uh, multiple uh, technical evidences th that are converging around it. So that uh, suggests that at least for a while, we would see some kind of respite. And if you see overall, you know, uh, movement in bank nifty and mid cap index uh, they have also reached their uh, you know major fibonacci ratios so we expect uh, some kind of relief move uh, for the day if we have to uh, keep an eye on any particular level then probably uh, 10900 10950 these are the levels to watch out for but we would rather you know play this uh, move uh, along uh, with uh, call options 10850 call option which closed somewhere around 45 47 yesterday uh, we would be comfortable buying it somewhere around 25, uh, keeping a stop loss around 7 and we would expect uh, Nifty at least once uh, surpassing 10,900 today. So in that scenario, our target would be somewhere around 5862 for this particular call option. And stocks, Samit? Uh, both would be on the long side. Uh, Godrej consumer that, the, you know, that has been clearly bucking the trend since last 3-4 days. We have seen good recovery. Stock has managed to surpass its uh, recent hurdles. And hence we expect a decent up move, 665 is the level to watch out for, uh, go along with the stop loss of 618. And the other buy call would be on the, you know, one of the outperforming stocks in last one and a half years, that is Pillite Industries. Yes, yesterday stock came off a bit, but we would interpret this as a good buying opportunity. Stock has retested its previous breakout points and hence we expect some buying to emerge. Target would be around 1360, can be bought with a stop loss of 1235. 
Okay, we'll watch out for those names. Uh, from a trade perspective, uh, uh, Samit Chavan, and while we're looking at uh, what the index is likely to do and what specific pockets of strength and weakness look like, according to you, uh, you know, the, the metal names, um, which are not in the buying list, obviously, today from, from your end, but the kind of cuts that we've seen, uh, do they have or are, they, are any of those stocks near some crucial supports from where a bounce can be anticipated? See, honestly speaking, you know, a couple of uh, months back, uh, you know, we were expecting a metal index to, uh, you know, undergo a last phase of correction time-wise as well as price-wise. Uh, but unfortunately, in last uh, couple of weeks, uh, the entire metal space has, uh, you know, sa seen a massive correction. Tata Steel, among which uh, we have been closely tracking, uh, it has clo closed below its important uh, support level of 450 last week and since then, uh, we have already seen a decent correction of nearly 15-18%. But, uh, you know, with a broader view, now uh, on the weekly chart, I can see this stock, you know, having a support around 375-374. So, I won't be surprised to see some kind of, you know, relief move probably in next uh, couple of days in this counter. So, at current juncture, yes, certainly we won't uh, advise traders to go short on metal names. In fact, those uh, who have shorted at higher level, they should cover up and aggressive traders can start accumulating uh, you know tata still at current level it has been you know oscillating within the boundaries of downward sloping channel and now it has reached its uh, you know lower end of that particular channel so i would be a contra buyer in tata still uh, at least for next uh, one one and a half weeks mm. in fact js pale also is the other one that uh, saw a big cut of 11 percent in yesterday's session so that dropped uh, to levels of about 102 taking its uh, uh, seven day drop to 22 odd percent one month it's dropped about 24 odd percent uh would you track this one gora jspl we do track that uh, but we are a little bit concerned uh, with respect to the amount of debt that it carried on the balance sheet and then of course they did an exercise devina and they kind of uh, bought that down to a certain extent but it's still nowhere near uh, the comfort zone if you will and of course, you have the you know lingering overhang in terms of news flow, as far as uh, the top management is concerned. So this this would be the last preferred stock, if you will, in the metal pack. Well, last preferred, and that's uh, quite a telling statement on a stock which has fallen quite a bit already. But Gorang obviously believes that uh, there are better names to buy in metal space, and maybe rightly so as well, because there are better quality names which have fallen quite a bit already and maybe they give you a better, safer bang for the buck. And in these markets, maybe that is more warranted. Um, Gorang, somebody's asked a question about Parag Milk Foods and the correction that we've seen in that stock. Yesterday was down about 10% as well. Have you looked at this one fundamentally? One month, 29% down. Yesterday, 10% down. It's a great consumption theme, but unfortunately, we don't cover this stock. And if I'm not mistaken, I think a couple of weeks back, a uh, couple of weeks back, I beg your pardon, the management was there on various, uh, you know, media uh, and they have also, uh, they have said that they have actually gone ahead and increased uh, the price of milk uh, and of course certain other products. Uh, unfortunately, we don't track it, so difficult to comment, Nikaj. Uh, yeah, the other interesting bit is uh, Vodafone idea. 5.35 is the current rate now on the stock and, and suddenly now uh, in private quarters, P circles, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, what happens next. I mean, the rumor yesterday, I mean, WhatsApp rumors, of course, yesterday had it that what if Vodafone after the lock-in period is over, Once goes away out. from the argument and pulls out and all of that. So difficult to say and difficult to prejudge all of this. Um, nothing that we've learned out here at Bloomberg Quinn, by the way, essentially rumors, but it's pulling the stock down. This is substantially lower and some serious wealth destruction uh, for shareholders of Vodafone idea. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think it's probably that that's pulling the stock down. Maybe that's just a function of One the of fact the that the stock has come down. And it, it Maybe, yeah, the chicken and the egg theory. The thought process, but the stock nonetheless is, has seen uh, you know, a very, very sharp correction. Uh, you had the rights issue at about 12 odd rupees. At that time, the stock was trading at 15. Uh, face value was 10 bucks. It's now at half of that. Uh, 5.3, a penny stock at that now for water for an idea. But uh, 30 seconds left to go. We'll try and get uh, a quick comment on this as well. But uh, 
Markets uh, across Asia are fairly well poised this morning. So you've got uh, Nikkei 2 to 5 still holding on to those early morning gains of half and odd percent. China too, not uh, trading badly at all. And Hong Kong that's up about 4 tenths of a percent. For the SGX Nifty, recouped some of those lost uh, points, but still marginally in the red, actually flat. So uh, not much of a cue that you can get from the SGX Nifty at this point. However, for the uh, Nifty 50, the pre-open ticks are on your screens. We're opening positive. First ticks at least suggesting a positive start. About a quarter of a percent higher on the Nifty 50. And then you've got uh, the Sensex opening a third of a percent higher this morning. Coming down to individual stocks then, and Tara Steel, uh, most likely, uh, obviously you would have anticipated the open to be lower on the back of the disappointing numbers. But uh, this is, um, you know, a big 10% drop should consolidate. Z again is showing you a 10% cut, 295, uh, you know, that wouldn't be the case, you'll probably see it, uh, even if it's open lower, this will uh, normalize. Bharti Airtel, Coal India, Sipla are some of the other losers in trade. However, the start for, is more positive than negative. Yes Bank is now back at 90, so that stock's up about 3.5%. Altrotech Cement reports its numbers today, so we'll watch out for that, 2.5% higher. Titan is up 1.5%, Aisha Motors, India Bulls Housing, some recovery after yesterday's sell-off. Hindalco, Grassim, ICICI Bank, are some of the other bigger movers. HCL Tech, just want to see what that stock's doing. Post its numbers uh, uh, yesterday, HCL Tech is flat. So, 1022 is where HCL Tech is trading at. 70.78 for the currency uh, this morning is what you got. So, some strength that's coming. Aurobindo reported numbers which looked uh, decent. Uh, the commentary... Whatever little has come out thus far is also not bad, 8% higher in the first rates. Let's see if that lasts or no. Sipla, and just want to mark if indeed the brokerage downticks are resulting in the pullback on the stock. Remember, yesterday was doing okay, uh, holding out well, but today the details coming out and not looking all that great. Um, want to see what DHFL is up to, had a sharp 10% downtick yesterday. Let's see what that is doing now. Well, about a percent and a half higher, but well, let's wait and watch if that lasts or no. A uh, couple of other names that you have to monitor in the session today. Uh, remember, uh, HPCL, the numbers were very, very and truly below estimates. They reported GRMs substantially lower than IOCs for now holding out. Siemens, the board has decided not to pursue the sale of the mobility rail and mechanical drives business to the parent. That's a key overhang which has been removed on part of Siemens. And maybe, just maybe, that stock could stay positive, uh, start positive and stay positive. And a couple of other Oracle Financial Services and Phoenix Mills were good numbers. Let's wait and watch if they were to react positively. So those two or three names that you have to monitor in the session today, do watch out. Uh, and uh, just uh, before we get to the IPO of the morning, just quick opening thoughts on one stock, Aurobindo Pharma. If it starts off positively today, Samit Chavan, is there a trade possible out here? See, stock has been consolidating of late around its, you know, multi-year support lows uh, around 540, 545 and, you know, uh, and since last 3-4 days uh, we have seen the entire pharma space has been bucking the trend. Uh, so probably, you know, we might have some kind of catch-up move, but, to, you know, if that catch-up move has to trigger, uh, stocks need to surpass its hurdle of 568. So if that happens in our early chart, at least you will see some kind of, you know, uh, breakout happening. On the daily chart, you would see some kind of trend reversal. Uh, so I would be comfortable, you know, buying only beyond 568. So if that happens in 588, 590, these are the next levels to watch out for. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, the new kid in the block. Afle India will be listing on the bourses today. The marketing and advertising technology solutions provider is looking to raise just about 450 crore rupees, but got a very strong response in subscription period. Samit Sarkar is here to take us through the listing scenarios. Samit, morning. Uh, good morning, Neera. So, if you see, the company had raised close to 459 crore rupees from the primary markets and at the issue price of nearly 4, uh, 745 rupees per share. Now, if you see the subscription, they received a strong subscription from the HNI portion with uh, total subscription nearly being uh, 199 times for the HNI side. The total subscription was close to 86.5 with QIB coming in at 55.3 and retail portion subscribing this IPO at around 11 times. Now, because of this strong subscription, it is expected to list at a premium. So, the grey market premium for this uh, listing is 
is close to 200 rupees per share. There is a listing gain of nearly 27 percent to its issue price of nearly of 745 rupees. So let's see how the valuations would stack up on listing. Now the issue price of 745 rupees, the company's market market capitalization was close to 1900 crore rupees, and its price to earnings was 39.2 times, and EV to EBITDA was close to 2.7 times. Now if it less had a premium of 200 rupees, then the market capitalization of the company would be would cross 2400 crore rupees. Its price to earnings would be 50 times, while its EV to EBITDA would be close to 3.5 uh, 3.4 times. And, and if it list at a premium of nearly 250 rupees to uh, its issue price, then the market capitalization would cross 2500 crore rupees. Its price to earnings would be close to 52.5 times, while its EV to EBITDA would be close to 3.6 times. Now, of this total issue size of four, uh, 59 crore rupees, the company ha will be using nearly 90 crore rupees for its inorganic acquisitions and working capital and general purpose going forward. So that is the fresh issue that has coming in in this company. Now, this is an advertising and marketing a technology solution provider and it operates in nearly two segments that is consumer platform and enterprise platform and currently if you see the consumer platform contributes the most to its uh, total revenue that is close to 97 percent so let's see how the valuation or how, how the listing for this company happens after a strong subscription that we had seen for this ipo okay so that's affle india it might let's see how it does the subscription indicates it to do well so amit just a quick follow-up sterling winsell i think today is the last day for subscription what have brokerages largely said i think pl was the one that had said that subscribe everybody else was on the sidelines no no no. actually uh, at that time we had just received a note from pl but then all the other brokerages have also given a subscribe rating for that ip on the back of its cheaper valuation strong execution capabilities that the company has uh, shown in the past and also because of a good order book and a good uh, brand name that the company currently has so it's a subscribe rating coming in from all the companies given the strong prospect that solar epc pro, uh, poses going forward in future yeah. so uh, thanks so much thanks so much for putting that into perspective now a couple of things viewers if you want to know more about it because affle india lists at 10 and sterling vinson is the last day for subscription do log on to our website bloombergquin.com a number of articles out there uh, telling you what to do with each of these ipos what have brokerages said and what are the financials looking like so do log on to our website and try and read more about these two ipos uh, Affle list today, Sterling Vincent last day for subscription today. Gorang, um, at past you've looked at some of the IPOs. Do you have thoughts on either Affle India or Sterling and Wilson? Well, on both we had a void to be very honest. Uh, we had come out with an IPO note uh, on both and we had given an avoid. Uh, we believe that valuation looked a little bit stretched for both. Uh, and my sense is that uh, given the backdrop and the environment, uh, I think it is prudent to just uh, hold on to your horses uh, in terms of uh, you know quality of IPO, or pricing of the IPO valuation, and of course if you are looking at this listing gains, then I don't think this is the right time to look at. Hmm. Just the fact that you've seen a lot of these IPOs come into the market, hit the market over the last few months, these first few first six months of the year. <laughs> You've at least seen about five or six IPOs hitting the market, which could also, uh, you know, probably uh, you know, dry out the secondary market a bit because it, while the, the quantum of funds that these companies have been raising in the primary markets, uh, you know, that would in a way affect, uh, you know, what happens with regards to the regular market uh, uh, flows that are being seen. Gorang, in light of that, uh, would you say that? Uh, you know, the num bigger number of IPOs would have a, a negative impact on just how much money comes back into the market in the listed space already? I don't think, I don't think, Devina, that's going to be a major concern for the market. And let me say this, I think uh, uh, investors or subscribers to the IPO have become extremely, extremely conscious in terms of the quality and the pricing. And there are one too many platforms available now to you know, reassure yourself with respect to the credibility of the new paper that is coming into the market. And uh, given the uh, market environment, I don't think uh, anybody would be in a hurry to rush in with the IPO, especially with, uh, with respect to high premium or valuation. I think there's definitely going to be justice done. But let me say this, if the quality of the paper is good, if the management is credible and if the valuation is justified, then definitely that will create enough excitement in the market. But it all depends upon the valuation, quality, and of course the timing. 
Okay, well, got that. As they say, if the bride is pretty, the suitor will come. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've seen already about five of them list, and they've actually all of them done pretty well after listing to. I mean, obviously in the recent times because of the sell-off, but post listing, uh, you know, the gains have been there for most of them. I think India Mart, India Mesh, which uh, which uh, listed recently, and that's had pretty uh, uh, a decent enough gain on listing. The premium was, I think, about twenty twenty-five percent. And uh, it's still trading at around those levels, so it's not been bad for this one. Polycab, yeah, it listed about 670, now it's about 560 odd. But it held on through those gains for quite some time post its listing. Yeah, and 570 is not a bad price as well, and in the kind of correction that we've seen across the board. Its issue price was 538, so it's yeah. still above its issue price. Yeah. But uh, I think we've got about five minutes left to go for uh, market opening. So we tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. Tata Steel's first quarter profits declined to the lowest in over two years due to lower domestic steel prices and higher raw material costs. HCL Tech misses profit and margin estimates in the June quarter. However, it has maintained its revenue and margin growth guidance for FY20. Siemens Aurobindo Pharma's uh, quarter one earnings meet estimates and Phoenix Mill surpasses expectations. MSCI adds HDFC Life to its global standard index and removes Union Bank of India from the global small cap index. Autotech Cement is the only Nifty company scheduled to report its quarterly earnings today. Well, I, I, arguably one of the stocks of the day aside of Aurobindo and results has to be HDFC Life. Now, the only thing is I can proudly say that we told you so because we spoke about this possibility a few days back. We sc spoke about this day before yesterday in the countdown show wherein I, I think Yatin Adarshan, one of the two, sp spoke about how there's an out the chance that HDFC Life might get added to this MSCI index. At that point of time, the stock was 500. A lot of trading calls given there. The targets were two about 540, 545. Now, Samit Chavan, my question to you is this. For somebody who initiated long positions in HDFC Life, not an FNO stock, but initiated long positions, is it reaching a point of resistance where you would rather book profits, or do you believe the stock is strong enough for you to continue on the longs? See, honestly speaking, you know, uh, the stocks, HDFC Life, HDFC AMC, they have been giving some, you know, gravitifying moves uh, in such kind of, you know, market scenario wherein uh, we are seeing stocks uh, tumbling to their fresh 52-week low, tumbling to their fresh, uh, you know, all-time lows. Uh, so in such, such a scenario, this stock is now approaching its all-time high. So I think uh, the overall, you know, relative strength is quite high for this particular counter. Uh, I think one should stay put, yes, 540 would be an immediate hurdle. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this stock you know, surpassing that hurdle and heading in the in an uh, chartered territory. So one should stay put on the low side now, 490, 480 would act as a support. Ram spoke about how he likes this HDFC group stock, so maybe he anyways got a positive call on HDFC life as well. But 541 on the valuation front, Divina, far higher than any of the other um, listed insurance plays, uh, be it uh, SBLI for ICICI, which are the pure play ones, Max, or maybe even uh, Aditya Birla, Aditya Birla Capital, which has got that ha houses that both AMC and the life insurance business. But HDFC life somehow getting a fabulous premium amongst all of the other listed in life insurance plays. Well, not just uh, the HDFC Life, if HDFC AMC within the AMC space, uh, HDFC Bank within, within the, the banking, banking space. space. So anything with the name HDFC probably gets that, attracts that kind of premium. Uh, JNK Bank, 10% higher again, and uh, you've got that stock doing well in the last three or four trading sessions. Uh, you know, uh, post um, the um uh, articles three, of yeah, uh, revoking of the articles 370. Uh, this particular stock has been active and the last seven days 40 percent uptick on JNK Bank. Quickly, Samit Chauhan, JNK Bank, would you trade it? See, generally we avoid this counter considering its low uh, volume activity, but in the last three days uh, we have seen massive uh, up move in this counter. It is now approaching its important resistance of 53, 54. These are the levels to watch out for. Okay. Um, Gorang, quick 20 seconds. Uh, you, you've given us a lot of stocks already. Uh, one quick name between HDFC Life, HDFC MC. If you had to choose one, 20 second answer. I hope I could choose both, but if I have to pick one, it would be HDFC MC. Okay. No, I mean, I, I get your point because you said at the start that you would like the entire HDFC space, but I just wanted a relative performance because some people have only limited amounts of money. But Gorang, a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for accommodating our interview request today. Appreciate your time. It was a pleasure.
Thank you, Neeraj. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right, that's the view from Gaurang Shah of Geojit, the HDFC AMC uh, over HDFC Live. Okay, less than less than one minute. No, about a minute left. Um, Samit Chauhan, your top call, yes. But before that, just one very quick word. Nifty Bank likely to start off half a percent higher today. Would you trade it? Yes, definitely. Our inclination on the index uh, would be on the positive side, and Bank Nifty also has uh, you know managed to find support around important level. Uh, so we would uh, expect a decent relief move. 28 100, 28 200. These are the levels to watch out for. And your top call for the morning? Uh, it would be Godrej Consumer Products. Stock has been bucking the trend, so I would expect continuation of this move. Uh, 665, 685. These are our near-term targets. Go along with the stop loss of 618. Okay, uh, Samit, take a moment to thank you for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. Really appreciate your time this morning. Watch out for Goodrich Consumer. That is the top call from Samit Chavan in the session today. 15 seconds left for the markets to kickstart trade. Post-market open, we'll be talking to promote Gubbi of Marcellus Investment Managers. But uh, expect a start in the green today. Uh, the Nifty is... Uh, performing much better than what the SGS was indicating, but performing in line with what the rest of the Asian screen is. About a third of a percent higher for all the three key benchmark indices, so not a bad start. Uh, frankly, yesterday at about 10.30 p.m., if you looked at the U.S. markets, you wouldn't believe this would be the start. But a sharp recovery in U.S., Asia doing well, India doing well. Uh, the mid-cap and the small-cap indices too, too could be starting off well. At least the mid-caps would be starting off well. Smart caps may be relatively sedate, but they tend to pick up in the latter half of trade. Bring up the heat map and show you what's moving. Maybe a lot of green, very little red yes a lot of green very little red just about seven or eight stocks in the red and a lot of stocks in the green you don't want to cop well four and a half percent higher for that one not bad yes bank is gaining some so not bad to HCL tech it's a bit of a miss brokerage has cut target prices as well on the margin miss however the stock is about two and a half percent high on the revenue growth numbers and typically these days revenue growth numbers and company meeting that higher than 10 percent um, revenue growth estimate if it looks like that the street will probably reward it. India Bulls Housing Finance, Infosys, Adani Ports, Aisha are amongst the other top gainers in the session today. Aisha recovers from the body blow that it was dealt yesterday. What's not doing well? Sipla. Darshan spoke about it in the morning that the brokerages have cut the target prices because the details came out post market hours yesterday. The finer details, you'll of course hear the management at about 9.40, 9.45 on the show, but that stock is starting off 3% lower. Tata Steel about a percent and a half lower result reaction and Maruti uh, in a bit of a no man's land up one day down the next down about well half a percent very quickly a couple of uh, pockets which i want to highlight uh, stocks that have been in focus the last few days and what they could be doing today and some result reactions so financials largely in focus d1 housing finance got hammered yesterday up about two and a half india Bulls housing finance was down about 14 percent yesterday up about a percent right now and rbl bank though continues to grind lower has had a 43 percent correction from the near peaks last one month and corrects another one and a half percent. This one is going through some serious pain of its own. A couple of result reactions maybe. Uh, stocks that have come out with numbers which are better than estimates or at least good numbers. Oracle Financial Services and Phoenix Mills, both of them start off well. Devina, what are you spotting? Uh, something that didn't do well on the earnings, HPCL, no longer an index stock though. The stock uh, in pre-open uh, was up and probably co continuing those gains into opening as well. 246 in HPCL. Petronet LNG is the other the one as well. Profits rose about 27 odd percent. Margins came in much higher at 11.9 odd percent versus an expectation of around 9.6 percent. Stocks down about half an odd percent. Uh, we spoke about Aurobindo Pharma, Adani Gas, Siemens is also the other one that reported its standalone quarter three FI19 numbers. Uh, margins at 11 percent and net profits up about 21 percent. Stocks up two and a half odd percent. Other gainers. Uh, within the broader market space and a JNK bank, we've been talking about how that stock's been performing and it looks like it's carrying on with its gains in today's trade as well. 12% higher. Uh, the last three days, the stock I think has gained about 40 odd percent plus. Uh, we've got Spark, which is up, Dilibilcon, which is up. Uh, Divan Housing Finance is up about 2.8 odd percent. Then you've got a walk hard. India Bulls real estate moves up. Yesterday's session saw a major drag on all of the India Bulls uh, group stocks. Karur Vesya Bank is the other one that's up. Should pull up a Lakshmi Vilas Bank also because the last few trading sessions along with the India Bulls group stocks, Lakshmi Vilas Bank also has been taking a drudging. And today's session is no different. It's down about 5% yet again. Chopper Stop is up. And then you've got the likes of an IRB Infra, two straight days of gains. India Cements reported decent numbers. And the stock's up. Uh, yesterday it reported the numbers. And yesterday was also up. Today's also up about uh, two odd percent in the session. 680 stocks advance, 452 stocks decline in the session.
All right, uh, time now to bring in an important market voice, Pramod Gobi, founder of Marcellus Investment Managers. He's joining us on the show this morning. Pramod, uh, very good morning to you. Morning. Uh, has anything changed? Uh, yesterday, uh, 35 basis point cut by the RBI didn't really do much you know, uh, to change sentiment for banks either. The markets uh, sort of crumbled towards the end of the trading session. But the overall structure does that change anytime soon? The weakness, the inherent weakness that's there? No, good question actually. I mean, I think at the margin it does help. Lower interest rates will at some stage be passed on by the financial system, both banks and the lenders, and will result in lower borrowing costs. But the question is, is uh, a high borrowing cost a delimiter for people to start capex projects and start spending? At this stage, uh, that's not a factor. At some stage it will become, and hence all these cuts will come in handy. Uh, but the real logjam today is a sort of a risk aversion or, or, or a crisis confidence or confidence of crisis where you know people have liquidity we know banks are parking surplus liquidity uh, in the repo window uh, there's ample liquidity in the system it's just uh, a matter of whether uh, banks want to on lend uh, to further lenders given the sort of gray grayness in the economy grayness um, in NBFC's books which are you know, we all know are opaque to some extent and hence they're not able to make the call um, which are the good NBFCs and which are the bad NBFCs because NBFCs play an important role in the economy, mm. particularly in terms of supplying capital to the last mile where banks cannot reach out to. And that last mile of the economy is being strapped of capital and that's resulting in, gr in a growth slowdown. Some businesses are leveraged, a slowing down in growth hurts their ability to service that debt and they become fresh NPAs and then we are down that uh, downward spiral now. So something needs to be done around that. I think we spoke about uh, an asset quality review of sorts for the NBFCs uh, akin to what we did for the PSU banks and the corporate banks um, a few years ago. Uh, that will bring its own short term pains but at least um, you know, it will put, put an end to this sort of uh, drag. Um, at least the good NBFCs can give confidence to the lenders. They start borrowing from the system. They start on lending. And some parts of the economy start uh, getting that financing to arrest the sort of uh, downward spiral that we had been seeing. So that's clearly the need of the uh, R today. Um, and uh, at some stage, I I'm pretty sure that the RBI and the government are cognizant of these issues and they're working on on a mechanism to come out with. And that's where, I guess, the whole turn will happen. Not so much the, the monetary policy alone. Monetary policy will help. Uh, but at this stage, I think we need to break this log jam of sorts. OK. The other technical factor, and promote you, because you, I mean, in your, with your past experience, you have such a good handle on that, is the kind of outflows that we're seeing now. We may be seeing outflows across the region, maybe. But India has just seen incessant flows. I mean, a billion dollars a week now doesn't seem eye-popping. Uh, there were some reports yesterday in the Economic Times that maybe some clarification from the Finmin around the FBI surcharge might be issued mm -hmm. as early as this week. Now, whether it happens this week or the next week or whether it happens or no, either ways, mm -hmm. what's your verdict or what's your belief of how foreigners' behavior would be after the kind of carnage that we've seen in the month of July? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's getting muddled because there are various factors at play. Okay. Uh, I think to the extent that we can pinpoint the reversal in the direction of FPI flows to the budget, you can say the budget has been, uh, uh, you know, a pretty big factor, particularly the surcharge on FPIs. But alongside that, you need to remember the whole uh, global macro is turning uh, quite sour, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a flight to safety. Um, given the sort of risk war, uh, risk around trade wars now converting into currency wars, um, and then you know there are conspiracy theories on how China could weaponize the Treasury holdings. Hopefully, it won't because uh, you know that will have catastrophic uh, uh, ramifications on itself. So I don't think uh, that will materialize. But having said that, the sentiment globally is turned sour, and as a result. There is a flight to safety. U.S. Treasury yields are down to 1.6 percent. Who would have thought uh, a year ago, right? So we're yeah. almost touching 3 percent. So to that extent, uh, you know, gold is up 15 percent. Um, uh, Japanese yen is rallying. So you can see all safe asset classes uh, rallying. So I don't think emerging market equities will be right up anybody's order in terms of rushing to buy, uh, particularly in India, given the sort of slowdown we've seen and also the lack of uh, policy support, particularly the FPI surcharge. So I don't think one should expect a reversal uh, in, uh, uh, in FBI flows. 
Uh, this reasonable flow is coming from the domestic savings itself. As we know, real estate has been on the back burner on pretty much everybody's mind, be it corporates or individuals, nobody's touching real estate with a barge pole. All that savings is coming into the market. I think we can, we can safely uh, rely on our own domestic savings if we can get the policy action right. Uh, there's plenty of money waiting to come into the market. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's the real hope, but uh, I think we need to uh, break this logjam on the, on the NBFC crisis front and get the financing going in the economy. And hopefully that should uh, resolve some of the problems by itself. So, so it's just a, a one follow-up. So it's always futile to time the market, and I agree. But my question then therefore would be that if indeed the FI selling is not just an FPI factor, which I agree, but also the global backdrop and the PBOC actions, today the midpoint rate for the yuan is, you know, 7.0093 uh, uh, yeah. or thereabouts, or 3.9. Yeah. Yeah? So if that is indeed the case, do you reckon the sentiment around what could happen to Asia Pact might be sour and despite the government's moves, there is a, do you factor in a likelihood of the indices drifting lower from where they are right now, despite the domestic flows looking what they are? Yeah, I think it is clear because uh, we have uh, sort of built up a gap between the indices and the underlying earnings. Um, you know, we've been talking about for years now, almost four years that we haven't seen uh, earnings growth at the index level. So that, uh, you know, that gap was built because people were in the hope of that earnings recovering at some stage and catching up with the price line. Uh, now I guess the catching up will happen the other way around where the price line will converge towards the earnings line. Um, that's bound to happen. Uh, it was sort of holding up given the sort of flow support that we had seen from FPIs all through this year until July. Uh, but now with that support gone and further sentiment turning uh, uh, negative, uh, I think that's the base case assumption that the indices should uh, you know, continue their downward slide. Now, what can turn around? Clearly, earnings cannot turn around overnight. I think we are still, even with the best measures, we'll, we're still at two, three quarters away from an earnings turnaround. <laughs> Uh, you can look for a sentiment booster of sorts if the government comes up with some uh, uh, policy action, particularly to arrest the downward slide on the liquidity side of things, uh, but also in terms of boosting growth measures. Uh, a GST cut, um, who knows, uh, quite can be a sentiment booster for industry and for the market in general. So that is perhaps something that one can look forward to uh, if this were downward slide on the indices uh, were to get arrested. You know, I just want to go back to your previous point and while we've been talking about a whole lot of gloom in terms of global growth prospects as well, from an equity market standpoint, you know, U.S. has not seen a bear market in a decade and they still are holding strong. Even after making a record high, they're probably off it by about 4% or something, mm -hmm. 4 to 5%. So, I mean, they're holding on to those gains. And the whole, if at all, you do see a slightly more larger impact of the trade war concerns, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably a bigger sell-off in the U.S. equity markets, the amplified ramifications on India, despite having sold off the way we have, mm -hmm. could it be more jarring? No, it's quite possible. But the only thing to look forward to is that, look, uh, monetary policy is turning um, benign in a very concerted way. It's just uh, India was not the only central bank to cut rates yesterday. Yeah. We had two other central banks globally doing it. Um, and I think uh, given the way growth is panning out, pretty much every central bank across the world will be pumping in liquidity, will be cutting rates, money will become cheaper. So, um, so related to that is the cost of capital coming off and how the asset markets will receive some support. So given we are living in uncharted territories in some ways, uh, 2008 onwards, uh, it's a completely new world, which is where you mentioned that US has been, has never seen a bear market in the last 10 years, uh, where a lot of the asset market uh, price appreciation is to do with the uh, reduction in cost of capital and money being made available easy. Uh, and that's not changing, remember. So to that extent, asset markets can look forward to a continued run but they may not see uh, an event where uh, of, of, say, 2008 or the Asian crisis. Uh, real economy is a challenge. Real economy has been a challenge. Other than the U.S., there's been um, you know, no signs of growth anywhere in Europe or Japan, uh, anywhere in the developed world. Emerging markets are also struggling. So to that extent, um, the, the benefits of the loose monetary policy hasn't been delivered to the real economy. 
Uh, in fact, the U.S. pickup in growth and the increase in the labor market can also be attributed to the cut in tax rates that the Trump administration made yeah. as soon as they came in board. So nothing has been attributed to the monetary policy except for asset price inflation. But that is why the earnings started to look the way they did in the last few quarters. But the effect of that will start to wear out now and, and you will see that coming in. Absolutely. So I reckon if you were to see a turnaround in the real economy, um, you know, governments will have to turn towards fiscal rather than monetary policy. The question is how many governments globally have the wherewithal to, uh, you know, come up with strong fiscal measures. Uh, it is quite possible to monetize their debt, again, combination of monetary and fiscal pol uh, policy to boost growth. But I think uh, at some stage we will have to see a pickup in the real economy and not simply look forward to an asset price inflation because at some stage uh, that will seem, uh, you know, completely out of whack. Yeah, some people will argue if not already. <laughs> Let's wait and watch. Pramod, so good having you. Thanks much for taking the time Thank out and being with us and giving us your thoughts. The market's holding out for now, but the banks have slipped from the highs of the day, just about 50 points in the green. Just need to slip into a quick break. On the other side of the break, we talk about two large uh, financial uh, earnings of two large nifty names. So VS Parthasarthi of Mahindra and Mahindra and among more of Sipla join in to talk about their numbers. <laughs>